Hello and welcome to another episode of Aussie Knowledge Enthusiast or Aussie KE. Um, and as I announced in the last video, um, why every video on YouTube about Germany is wrong or something like that, um, we will now uh, deep dive into um, those kinds of videos, uh, those kinds of videos done by people who moved from Germany um, to other countries or who came from other countries to Germany and share their experiences and talk about differences, culture shocks, stuff like that, or even the culture itself, um, maybe even educational uh, videos. Um, if you have any suggestions, please let me know in the comments. And today we will take a look at uh, five things Germans do that Americans find weird. Uh, done by Philae from Germany, who is uh, a girl uh, that moved five years ago to the US um, from some Bavarian uh, uh, village or, or city. I, I don't know um, entirely. Um, and she uh, does various videos on differences between uh, Germany and especially the US. And uh, this one is, um, as the title says, about things that Americans find weird. And without further ado, let's take a look. Germany and the US have a lot in common, and moving here wasn't really a huge culture shock. They're both Western cultures, but every now and then... Which is true. Um, even though technically Germany is uh, an Eastern country, because we are on the east side of the um, Zero Meridian, um, and not in the Western Hemisphere, um, but yeah, especially after World War II, um, the Americans gained a lot of influence in Germany and today in some um, in some aspects it's it's very hard to even differentiate um, to even notice the differences between um, Germany and uh, the US we have uh, Starbucks and McDonald's and subway and everything like that everywhere so maybe even the cities partly kind of look like like uh, uh, American uh, cities especially when you take a look at at the city center of Frankfurt for example um, so yeah it, it, there is a huge uh, American influence in um, in Germany, I mean, Rammstein even made a song about that. We're all living in America, America, it's wonderful. But uh, of course, there are several, several differences, especially when you look deeper. And then there are these situations where we see someone from the other country do something and we just have huge question marks in our eyes. Hello, servus, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Feli. I'm originally from Munich, Germany, but I've been living... Okay, from Munich, so... ...living here in Cincinnati, Ohio, on and off since 2016. And when you live in another country, another culture, you'll inevitably have these moments where you see an object or a place or see a person do something and just think to yourself, wow. That's weird. And of course, this goes both ways. When Ben came to Germany with me for the first time, there were lots of things that he found weird. And he's not alone with that. Even here, I sometimes get weird looks for some of my German behaviors. And you guessed it, I wrote down a whole list of those things. And today I'll tell you about the top five things that are normal to Germans, but weird to Americans. I have to, I have to say, um as she is from Bavaria. Bavaria is the number one, inf not influence, but but uh, when especially Americans think of Germany, um, they mostly and sometimes even exclusively think of Bavaria, which as well also has to do with the Second World War, uh, because Bavaria was part of the American uh, occupation zone so many many soldiers from the US were stationed in Bavaria so 
if you if you are in the US and see like Lederhosen and Bretzeln and Bavarian flags and and beers in these massive uh, glasses, um, this all is pretty much um, Bavarian culture, um, especially southern uh, Bavarian culture um, like Munich and stuff. Because uh, in the north the Frankian culture is a little bit different. So this is the Alps. Uh, Bavaria, uh, so to speak, um, and yeah, her her background um, shows that as well with the Lederhosen and Mickey Mouse, and uh, I don't see a pretzel, but um, here is uh, one of those uh, beer mugs, um, which are typical for um, southeast and south Germany, especially Bavaria and the uh, south of Saxony. Uh, so yeah, and there is a, is a um, Lebkuchenherz, um, I don't know, gingerbread heart, I think it's, uh, it's in, in English, um, which are mostly common um, in uh, Bavaria, especially on the Oktoberfest in Munich, but also um, across Germany as like um, souvenirs from um, carnivals and stuff like that. Not So you, you usually don't find them in the store, just lying around there but when you are at a carnival you usually can uh, buy those hey where's your trash oh this doesn't go into the trash just put it into the basket next to the door thank you oh do you need these for some kind of art project or something no nope, it's just where i keep all my empty bottles and cans okay Yes, Germans collect empty bottles and cans at home, which is definitely something that people from the US and other countries have to get used to at first. Even I have to get used to it whenever I'm back home. I this is the first generalization. Um, I think she will come to the point that we have a, a fund system. So um, if you give those bottles back to um, the store where you bought them, or any other store really, um, you get cash back. You get like um, 25 cents for a plastic bottle or um, a, a can. Uh, not not the food can, but a, a soda can. And uh, you get like 8 cent to 15 cent for hard plastic. So like Coca-Cola um, has these very, uh, very hard, um, thick plastic bottles, um, whereas the normal PET bottles, the plastic bottles are very thin. Uh, they give, uh, I think, 15 cent and beer bottles um, give like 8 cent. Um, but, there, there is a huge but. Um, I, for example, I only collect the plastic bottles because you can uh, give back the plastic, the, the PET bottles uh, and the cans you can uh, give back everywhere. Every supermarket has a machine, you can just put them in. Uh, when it comes to to those uh, mentioned cola uh, bottles or to the glass bottles, they are not accepted everywhere. So you have to go to like um, a, a, a drink store or something like that, um, where they handle in in, in uh, large varieties of, of glass and hard plastic bottles. And secondly. Not every, uh, especially glass uh, bottles in Germany have uh, uh, have those fund. I just don't know the English word for it right now. Uh, deposit is the right word. Uh, not every bottle has deposit. As of right now, um, this also goes for uh, many plastic bottles. Uh, even if they are um, f made of PET, um, they don't necessarily um, have a deposit on them. Uh, this will change in the next year um, because of the uh, EU and German law. Uh, every plastic bottle um, has to have that, those uh, 25 cent PET um, bottles, uh, have those 25 cents, except milk drinks or um, uh, uh, fruit drinks like like juice like real juice 100 percent 50 percent stuff like that um so only uh soda iced tea and uh stuff like that um only those have those uh, deposit and uh the same is for for glass and i am not aware that that will change anytime soon so you have 
glass bottles that are with a deposit with those 8 cent, like for example um, beer bottles, uh, but some aren't and um, most people I know don't collect them anyway, but if they collect that's usually for um, so-called Altglas container or um, which are huge trash bins uh, designated for like white glass, brown glass, green glass, uh, paper and um, uh, paper mache and um, stuff like that to recycle them. Especially in bigger cities uh, like here in Hamburg, it is also not really common to have um, waste sorting. So you have a bin for uh, plastic, you have a bin for paper, you have a bin for um, normal waste, you have a bin for um, uh, biological waste like food uh, uh, and stuff. Um, this is more common on um, in, in villages and on... on um, on the outskirts um, or everywhere where uh, one family homes are or generally houses, uh, single houses, double houses, but uh, most um, multi-party houses um, um, like the one I live in usually don't have those. Some have, some haven't. It's pretty much inconsistent, but it gets, it's, it gets more. It's not like we, we don't think about that. <laughs> sometimes accidentally crush soda cans because I'm so used to doing that here to save space in the recycling bin. But in Germany, that's a huge no-go. Because the reason why Germans collect these bottles and... It's not really a no-go. It, it's a no-go to, to um, squeeze them, but uh, you don't have to collect them. Um, there are programs, for example, when you are... Um, when you're just outside, when you're walking around and now you have that empty bottle and you don't want to take it home with you or for just 25 cents search for the nearest supermarket many people just throw them in the trash and uh, for those people um, there are programs um, in, in some cities for example there are um, like collective uh, like baskets uh, hang around the the trash can the public trash can uh, where you can just store them into because uh, many homeless people, for example, they um, collect them and uh, this can make the difference for them between having food and having no food. Um, so, yeah. Cans is that Germany has a deposit system, a fund system. This means that when buying beverages in bottles, glass or plastic, or in cans, you'll pay a few cents extra. You won't really notice it though, since it's already included in the price, and then you'll get that money. Mm, it is included in the price when you are when you look at your receipt after you bought it. Uh, when you're in the store, you just see the price for the item itself. And then there is like in, in a little, uh, little letters, there is plus 0.25 cents uh, deposit. So it's not like you, you go in the supermarket, and you see, oh, this drink costs like uh, 25 cents. So the drink itself is free. No, it's 25 cents plus 25 cent deposit. Um, and and even on the on the uh, even on the receipt, it is not um, it is not the the, the price of the uh, bottle itself itself doesn't go up. Um, it's still the same, like twenty five cents for a bottle, and then you have another position for the deposit, which usually is collected. So you have like you buy six bottles, then there are there is the deposit times six, twenty five cent each. And then uh, you have the uh, like three euros, the, uh, not three euros, one euro fifty deposit. Money back when you return the empty bottles and cans to the store. And this usually happens at these machines that you'll find at grocery stores called fund automats. You just put your bottles and cans in there and the machine scans the barcode. And if you ever uh, visit Germany and you want to do that, like here in the picture, um, the Usually the bottle has to go bottom first and the cap has to be still on. As I said, this only works with the thin PET bottles, not the thicker ones you see from uh, Coca-Cola and from Diet and some lemonades and stuff. Uh, not with glass bottles usually and um, yes, only those thin plastic and of course cans.
and don't press this button while you push that in because this is usually the I want to receipt button. So, yeah. That's why you can't crush them because otherwise it won't be able to read the code. And then when you're done, it prints out a voucher for you that you can then cash at the checkout. And Correct. since most people don't really want to carry around one or two empty bottles. Let's uh, go back a bit. Um, this here means uh, you can only cash in this uh, deposit um, receipt in this specific um, location at this uh, at this grocery store, at this supermarket where you um, put them in the in the uh, machine. This sometimes. You have that, sometimes you haven't. So, for example, when I bring my bottles back, I live in Hamburg, um, which is far away from Munich. <laughs> Maybe as far as it gets now, um, but very far away. Um, when I go to a supermarket like Penny and I um, throw my bottles in there, I, I can go to any other branch I like to and um, cash that in. But you usually have to do so on the same day. Um, and it might happen that you get rejected because uh, it's from another day or from another branch of the uh, of those stores. Uh, but usually around here it works um, with most supermarkets, not with the Lidl because in uh, Hamburg the Lidls are, are also have those um, specifications on the receipt cash at the checkout. And since most people don't really want to carry around one or two empty bottles at a time and get a lame 50 cents back, people usually collect them at home and wait until it's really worth it and then they bring a whole basket or whole bags to the store and get like a 10 euro voucher. I usually collect like um, two 60 liters bags full of um, plastic bottles um, until I get the motivation to <laughs> bring them to the store, even though the store is just like two minutes um, away. Um, and then I get between 15 and 25 euros, which is nice. Especially when you are at the end of the month, uh, you, you run out of cash and stuff. Um, it's, a, it's a nice little boost. It's food for two to five days, depending on what food. <laughs> oh yeah, that's the stuff. The amount of the deposit differs, by the way, depending on whether it's a refillable bottle, for those you usually get 8 or 15 cents back, a disposable plastic bottle, which is 25 cents, or an aluminum can, also 25 cents. Yeah, I totally forgot that um, those glass bottles and those thicker bottles, they get reused, which is why um, it's, it's, it's another reason why you only can uh, bring them back to specific places and not to every supermarket or discounter. Since. Can I do the schnitzel and just a Coke, please? Thank you. Oh, they forgot the ice. Yeah, that's not really common here. You're gonna have to ask for ice. Excuse me, could I get ice in this? Thank you. Two ice cubes? Another thing that Germans do that Americans find a little weird this is also partly wrong. Yes, um, especially since like 10 years or so, most, I, I won't say most, but many, many, many places abandoned um, the practice to put ice in your drink. Even McDonald's uh, in some places or in most places I know of uh, uh, at least uh, abandoned these uh, practices. So you have, uh, we don't have ice anymore in your drink because too many people um, were just disliking it and arguing about it because uh, you just water down the the drink you you don't get the amount of drink that you are have ordered but um, as I said not all of them um, and a huge portion of uh, especially restaurants and fast food restaurants still will um, put ice in your drink sometimes up to four or five uh, cubes stuff like that will always happen um, and um, of course cocktails is a totally different story because they usually have to be with ice um, but I, I, I of course mean normal soda stuff like that they will be with ice um, 
but also uh, many places that do that at least in my experience um, fill up a little bit above the line like when you order a 0 0.5 uh, drink then they and they put ice in then they usually go a bit above the line for 0 0.5 so to kind of balance um, that out but also that's uh, very can can differ at at any point so uh, don't take this for granted take it with a grain of salt some do some don't um, same goes with the ice some do some don't according to law experts if you get a drink with ice at the restaurant the glass has to be filled way beyond the mark or else the waiter is legally required to fill up on demand this does however not count for cocktails or long drinks some even like uh, most subways i recently visited um, they have some they, they only give you your cup and you have to fill it yourself and you can put ice in there from an icing machine if you want to so you don't have to ask but yes usually um, germans don't like ice in their drinks from the perspective that you get less drink and more water which um, also spoils the drink a little bit uh, but it is still very common especially in summer that you get drinks with ice and some germans even are grateful for that because the ice is very nice according to this statistic conducted by statista 25 percent of germans prefer their drinks with ice cubes at all times while 43 percent claim to prefer ice when the weather is hot only 32 percent of germans prefer their drinks without any ice at all times health experts by the way state that one should avoid ice drinks at all cost as the ice trays in restaurants as well as your ice dispenser at home might be full of bacteria faecal traces or mold like the most restaurants i went to recently um, usually in summer had ice in their drinks in winter not so much and i enjoy it because i like to um, let the ice melt in my mouth after i'm done drinking but yeah <laughs> That's just me. Is drinking beverages without ice. That's just not something that's common in Germany or in other European countries. At least not to that extent. If you ask for ice, it'll be more like in that scene that you'll get a few ice cubes, while Americans are more used to this. I mean, cocktails and things like that are served with ice in Germany as well, but again, it'll just be a few ice cubes as opposed to the whole glass being filled up Depends on the cocktail. With ice, but water or soda or juice spritzers won't usually come with ice. Water, yes. Water usually comes uh, in most restaurants. You get um, a glass and a bottle of water and you have to you, you fill it up yourself. Um, and sometimes you get the glass with water filled, but um, usually without ice, even in the summer. Um, the ice is more for like um, iced tea and sodas at all. Now, from our perspective, this doesn't mean that we drink our beverages warm. It's just that it's enough for us when they come out of the fridge or a cold basement. In some cases, even just room temperature is fine. And yes, even though I've lived in the US for six years now, I still don't put ice in my drinks. And I often find the iced water at restaurants, for example, way too cold. Like it's uncomfortable in my mouth. And yep. At home, it's a totally different story. I think I, I, I at least know of no one um, who usually puts ice in their drinks at home. I don't do it and I don't know anyone that does. Um, you occasionally buy crushed ice or do like ice cubes. Um, for example, when you want to drink a cocktail or when it's really, really hot in summer again. Um, but usually you just, I mean, I just drink out of the bottle, so I don't even use glasses. And if it's a drink I pay for, like at Starbucks or something, I'd rather get my money's worth and not get a cup full of frozen water with just a few ounces of the actual drink. But yeah. I'm pretty alone with that here. And I think just like I haven't started putting tons of ice into my drinks, even though I've lived in the US for years now, 
Ben will never stop doing it. When we were in Germany and he wanted to get a fountain Coke at McDonald's, he forgot to ask for ice. And then when we had already walked out, he noticed that it didn't have any ice at all. And he was really disappointed. Um, so yeah, I, 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 I won't ever understand why you have to put that much ice and why you don't like drinks without ice. I mean, it, it is different when they are at room temperature because I don't like drinks at room temperature. Um, but yeah, my fridge, for example, is very cold. So <laughs> um, the drink is cold when I when I get it right out, uh, right, out, right out of the fridge, which is also a reason why you won't uh, see that many um, fridges with ice uh, uh, spenders um, in Germany. There are many and they, they are sold and they are bought. Um, but especially in, in, in normal flats and apartments, you usually um, don't see them mostly because they um, most of them have their own um, water connection um, and most apartments and flats from the beginning have only one water connection and when you have a washing machine and maybe a dishwasher and then you have to do a compromise there. Um, and you have no place to to uh, put a fridge um, on there as well. So yeah. In the info box below. What do you want to do for dinner? It's your first night. Ooh, can we go to a real American diner? No problem. There's one super close by, like a mile down the street. Oh, perfect. That'll be a nice little walk. Walk. No. We were gonna drive. Walking for over 15 minutes to get to your destination? Normal for Germans, weird to Americans. Especially to those who don't live in a huge city, your car is what gets you around in the US. And yes, um, this is another thing that I, I won't ever really understand uh, why you have to drive um, because no, not really. I, I don't. I don't think. I don't understand it because um, I have seen so many videos about city planning in the U.S. and it just makes sense because you build your cities like that. You 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 don't build them pedestrian friendly, um, and you have those residential areas with no shops or whatsoever, and then you have to go to business areas, um, usually by crossing like a, a highway or something. So yeah, you have you have to have a car, um, especially if you want to. Um, back those home but uh, in Germany this also is partially wrong because in Germany um, it depends on where you live if you live in a city and you have like me uh, a supermarket or a discounter nearby then usually you go for a walk um, I usually go for a walk when I when I uh, go um, shopping, no matter where I go shopping, even if I have to go 20 to 30 minutes, sometimes I use an e-scooter, um, but I live in, in, in the very big city. Um, whereas when you just look outside of Hamburg, there are um, the next, apart from Norderstedt, which is like knit into uh, Hamburg, um, which just, it's basically the same city. Um, the next bigger city um, would be like, um, uh, the next really big city would be like Lübeck, which is like 80 kilometers away. Um, and between that, there are some smaller cities with like 50,000 uh, inhabitants. Um, but there are lots and lots of villages because, um, especially because Schleswig-Holstein is such an um, agricultural area. Um, so that means you have many villages with like only a few houses, uh, usually no a supermarket, no a grocery store, um, apart from maybe little ones, which are family owned and don't have um, much of um, to choose from. So those people who live more on the um, rural side, they um, in Germany also have to have a car to get anywhere, especially when you live in those villages that are not even connected to the um, ÖPNV, uh, we say in Germany, the, the public transport. Um, or 
maybe they are connected to the public transport but the bus only uh, drives once an hour so yeah those uh, in those cases you really really have to have a car in germany as well people who live in those areas usually have a driver li driving license uh, whereas like in hamburg for example um, many 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 people just don't because uh, i for example i don't have a driver's license um, because everywhere I want to go, I can go with the bus that uh, goes all five minutes usually over the day and in the night like every 10 to 20 minutes. Uh, I have a train station uh, near me um, with, um, uh, with, with subway, um, subway station and, and uh, uh, other trains that just go every five to 10 minutes um, even in the night and um, all that nearby and all the destinations i want to go usually have either a bus stop or a train station um, near to them as well so there is just no reason to ever use a car for me um, except you have like bigger transports or something like that but in those cases i just ask someone who has a car to help out so that's not that hard um, yeah, and, and, and like she said, um, in other cases you just go by foot or, like I do, you use an e-scooter which uh, or you use a bike. Um, many, many cities, especially uh, in Germany, are very bike-friendly, so that's not a huge problem. Um, uh, so yeah, there in cities, I agree, there is no real reason to not go uh, by foot because everyone has at least a discounter nearby usually um, there are so many um, I, I just uh, I, I said it once I think in, in a previous video um, I alone I have in the vicinity of like one kilometer around which is not even a mile um, I have I think six or seven um, discounter and uh, discounter is just like a supermarket but a little bit smaller and more um, cheaper um and two huge supermarkets so there really really is no reason for me ever if i go grocery shop shopping or something like that to use anything else than my food uh, my feet or an e-scooter or a bike so yeah and even for short distances you won't see a lot of americans walk if they don't have to it's even considered unsafe in many places the us is simply a car country in most places even in mid-sized cities like cincinnati there's always enough parking spots so you can really drive anywhere you want to go without really thinking about it i heard i hear this often that these argument about parking spots because in germany yeah you usually don't have that many parking spots but the reason for that is not because uh we are not well planned like it's cities like cincinnati uh, where you always have these huge and massive parking lots um whereas in germany like the supermarket i usually go to there has room for like six cars tops <laughs> um, if they really good uh, really uh, scram together really good and that's all they need because usually the people who go there are from closest vicinity so they just go by foot um, and those who come with a car either have very heavy loads um, because they're just doing their shopping for an entire week for a family of six something like that um or they just come home from from work and stop by and are in their car already so um that's mostly the reasons um you see um people even using those parking lots in really um close inhabited areas like where i live um, when you go a little bit outside, when you have more open space, more, uh, not like eight uh, supermarkets in your close vicinity, but more, maybe only one and it's a little bit further away, then yes, you see people more often use um, a car, but those supermarkets usually have already uh, bigger parking lots and even those are usually not full. 
Most stores and restaurants even have their own parking lots, and you can do countless things without ever leaving your car in this country. You can get food in drive-throughs. You can get coffee. You can get cash from drive-through ATMs. Even liquor from drive-through liquor stores. So really anything you want. Germany, on the other hand, isn't a car country. Most of our cities and towns were built before cars even existed, and we also don't have as much space for parking spots. So getting around with public transport by Bike and walking is pretty normal for us. At least in urban areas. In rural areas, it's a little different. But in Munich, for example, it'll most likely be quicker to walk 20 minutes than taking a car. Getting. But you sometimes see this um, as well in rural areas, like for example in the um, former GDR, where not everyone could afford to have a car, um, especially because the um, government don't just hand it out cars, you, you had to apply for having a car, you had to wait like in some cases like 25 years before you could get a car and um, so it was a necessity to just go by foot because there were no e-scooters, there were bikes but uh, like the area where my family comes uh, comes from is the um, Erzgebirge in um, South Saxony, which is, as the name suggests, a mountain range. And uh, I don't know if you have ever uh, traveled by bike in mountains. It's not something that you would do all day and not every day if you can prevent it. Um, but also you don't have a car, so you have to go around by foot, even though you li may live in one, uh, one village and the next village is like uh, two hours by foot uh, apart. You do that. And um, my, my father told many stories, told many stories about just doing that, just going by foot from, from one uh, uh, mountain to the other and stuff like that. Uh, just to go to the disco for for example so uh, in some cases and this mentality um, even though they today have cars and can afford cars and um, use cars uh, don't have to wait 25 years for them they um, many many people still prefer just just to walk if it's not too long I, maybe not two hours but at least um, around their close vicinity around their city, around their village and maybe the next villages, something like that. Getting through the traffic, taking forever to find a parking spot and then walking to your destination from the parking spot. Plus, many Germans also simply enjoy being active and being out in the fresh air. I think that's the girl's bathroom. There's a sign that says, uh, sit down to pee. Oh, no, you were right. That's the men's bathroom. What? Okay, so to this topic, I've actually dedicated a whole video before, so make sure to check that out if you haven't seen it. But yes, in Germany, it's common for men to sit down to pee. But, but... As I said in the pilot, um, many things that are wrong on YouTube about YouTubers making content about Germany um, has to do with cultural differences even within Germany, even within the same states, even within um, the same uh, 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 zip code area. Um, this has to do with the difference between men and women. Uh, no, Germany is not necessarily a country where men used to sit to pee. At least not all of them and I don't even think the majority of them. Uh, first of all, th this guy was like in a, in a public uh, restroom um, with, with uh, like, please sit down to pee. Um, you will never see that in Germany. At least not where I have been and I have been all around Germany um, at least one time. And I have, roof, uh, I have used public toilets everywhere <laughs> around Germany and never have I ever seen a sign like please sit down to pee in a public restroom. Given that the restroom has more than one space, um, like if you have separated men's and, and women's bathrooms, um, you usually have in the women's bathrooms you have like 
four to five or maybe sometimes more depending on how big it is uh, cabins for the women and in the men's bathroom you usually have two to four cabins and many pissoirs um, so you can pee while standing and the cabins usually are reserved for pooing um, and by public restroom I mean really every single restroom apart from anyone's home so in offices and restaurants the real public ones just around um, maybe some of those real public ones don't even have cabins or some place to sit they only have uh, like the the pissoir which usually is like a gutter just um, so not even separate uh, places and um, yeah I mean I mean really pretty much every be it at your supermarket at your shopping mall wherever every um, publicly publicly accessible bathroom for men has a pissoir at least one in it so men can pee while standing there are exceptions like if uh, if a small store f uh, for example only has one toilet like in a residential home um, then the usually don't have a pissoir on the other hand there are many homes um, I have at least two friends who have pissoirs in their bathrooms at home um, just to have the possibility to stand while peeing uh, many 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 men will stand while peeing or even if they only have a normal toilet which is one of the reasons why in especially in residential areas in residential homes you see those signs like please sit down to pee those were usually um, done by women maybe the, their wives or their girlfriends because they don't like the stains and and splashes and speaking of stains and slashes nine 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 yeah but but many men do it especially when they are single and um, don't expect anyone around uh, on the other hand of course many many men especially those um, who grow up with women around um, or have wives and girlfriends usually sit down to pee but it's not like we like it because um, I'm, I really don't know if that uh, goes for, for toilets all over the world, but at least German toilets, for example, they usually have a gap between the seat and the actual toilet. And especially in the morning, uh, but sometimes even so, you can shoot through that gap. So you pee on yourself um, if you don't push down, uh, which you also should do. Uh, because the inner edges um, of the toy, you don't want to touch them because usually your pee goes against that. So it's very unhygienically, um, it's also cold. And um, so, yeah, there are many, many downsides. Of course, there are upsides and it is more hygienically and it is more um, uh, better for your body to sit down. Um, but many 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 men and i tell this to you as a man who has been around other men uh, they don't really really like to sit down according to this statistic conducted by yougov in 2016 72 percent of men claim to have no issues peeing standing in bushes or at buildings when no toilet is available 50 percent claim to prefer peeing while standing at all times however in the end, 67% of men claim that at least at home they sit while peeing. They only do it for women, if ever. Usually. Not all of them, but usually women are involved. Well, in the US, most people are not only completely shocked when they find out about this, but also find it really weird. And, and I don't know why they would be shocked because as i just said no public restroom ever has not a pissoir so they would only expect this when they come especially to a woman at home and they have the sign please sit down to pee and the sign is only there because men usually don't so 
Nice try, Fele. And I understand that that's a weird thought if you've grown up your whole life thinking that all men pee standing up and that's just how it is, period. Like, it's okay that that's weird to Americans at first, as long as you don't get started with insecure comments like, oh, it's unmanly to sit down to pee. I hope we can all agree that that's complete bullshit. But back to the topic, in Germany, most men sit down to pee at home to avoid a mess. It's also supposed to be healthier for your prostate. As I said, at home, no, only when women are around, usually. And this is also what's expected of you when you're using someone else's bathroom in Germany. That actually is true. When, when you are visiting someone in their residential home, so it's not a public toilet, um, then uh, you are expected to sit down, especially when you visit a household with a woman or a girl. Um, if you visit a single man's household, then it might not be expected, but uh, if you do a mess, then you have to clean it up. And yes, even public bathrooms might have a little sticker or sign asking you to sit down to pee. My Never seen. Never seen in the usually public bathroom. Like I said, there might be exceptions when there is only one toilet which is shared by men and women alike and no pissoir. Then, yes, there may be a sign, but those are rare as it is. Might be weird to Americans, but it's normal to us Germans. Good to know she has frizzling going on as well. Green screens are hard. Now, this last one is a real mystery, even to me. The German stare. To be honest, before I came to the US, I didn't even know that that was a thing. But I Before I watched this video, I didn't even know that that was a thing. I, I really, I really have to say. Um, so, German stare is something I have heard about sometimes, especially from people abroad who who are like Germans are always staring or something like that in, in public and they felt stared at. And this might be one more cultural, um, uh, one more uh, example for cultural differences because usually in, in Hamburg, that's not really the case. People here really mostly avoid to stare in public um, just because we are uh, people in, in Hamburg are seen as cold and um, introverts uh, mostly um, which in some cases is true except for extroverts in Hamburg which are obviously also present um, but it's just not not that common to stare but I, I really don't know what staring really means. So when I sit at, in a train or when I am in, in a line uh, at the cashier, then I don't, uh, I never in my life stared anyone in their eyes. Uh, at least no one, I don't know. Of course, my girlfriend, I stare in the eyes. Of course, my, my parents, I stared in the eyes, but, but not strangers. Um, the only thing I, I might think of that would come close to that is watching um, for example when I am in line and I see in front of me there is this mother with two kids and she's handling uh, stuff then I may watch that even if nothing happens I may watch the other people just to observe them but I don't stare and if they were to look at me I would look away in an instant because I really don't like getting stared at and I really don't like to stare and most people in this area are um, the same um, as I said it's not really common at least not in my experience to stare it might be that in Bavaria where people are um, told to be more open and more more extroverts um, this might be a more common thing but, as I said, it depends on what counts as a stare. But after being away from Germany for a while, I suddenly noticed that Germans do this thing where they just look at you and don't stop. 
in a way that I wasn't used to it anymore from the US. And I noticed that I did it too. And I don't know if this has to do with German directness, that we're just curious, looking at people and thinking nothing of. German directness is not really a thing. Because that would be an assumption, um, a prejudice, a prejudice, prejudice, you know what I mean. Um, and a generalization. Because, of course, in Germany, we also have people who are introverts. Um, we have more closed down people, like I said, in North. Uh, people are seen as cooler and not as um, welcoming, um, but also very direct. Whereas people in the South usually are seen as not direct, but open. Um, because they want to be friends with all uh, people and so they, they don't... Uh, tell them in their faces how they feel about them or how they think about them um, which in the north people tend to do according to the prejudices prejudice you know what i mean um, so there is no thing as a general german directness but on the other hand maybe if we do uh, if we do a statistic and take all the countries in the world, maybe at the end of that statistic, Germans may come out as more direct as others. Let's say so. In in general. Not, not even in general, in um, in the medium. Of it, or if there's another reason behind it, but I do know that many expats who come to Germany find this really weird and uncomfortable. And I've had to explain to many Americans that no, they're not staring at you because you look American or they don't like you. It's something they just do. And they're probably not even aware of it, like myself. That's another thing, um, which is obviously not a German thing, but um, of course many people in Germany and other countries as well, tend to just stare, not at something, but um, you you also you you may know the term vacant stare. Just you are daydreaming in your head and you don't close your eyes while doing that, so it might seem as if you would stare, but you are not aware you don't see really because you are in your thoughts um, this might be something um, uh, that can be associated with that but as I said this is very common in many countries I, I mean in humans <laughs> because it's just something that's kind of normal in Germany and that was the last point on my list for today. And of course, if you enjoyed this video and like what I do here on my channel, make sure to subscribe if you haven't done so yet. It's completely free and it basically just means that my videos and posts will show up on your YouTube page every now and then. And if you even like to get notified whenever I post a new video, you can just activate the little notification bell next to the subscribe button and activate notifications in your YouTube settings. You, you could do that for me as well. I won't blame you. I won't tell anyone, except if you want me to, then I might tell anyone. I don't know. That was uh, five things that Germans do that Americans find weird, I think was a... Yeah, in the end, of course, as I said, the, the things she said are not generally wrong, per se. Um, she speaks out of her... Um, of of her bubble, of her experience, of her surroundings, um, where she grew up, um, her own habits uh, and behaviors. Um, uh, but the, the thing is that this, uh, as, which is what I want to show with this um, series and what I want to correct with this series, is that not everything is correct for all Germans. Um, not even for Germans that might live in the north of the same state, like in those cases in, in Franken, in Bavaria. Um, not even for people that live just outside the city she lives. Not even for people that live in another part of the same city she lives. Like in Hamburg, we have, e even in Hamburg, we have cultural 
differences um, because Hamburg was uh, in 1936 Hamburg was uh, just merged out of uh, surrounding um, cities and, and villages uh, one of the biggest was um, Altona which before that was Danish whereas Hamburg was more or less Prussian it was at least surrounded by Prussia it was not I think it was not really part of Prussia but it's free cities stuff like that but it was more influenced by Prussia than it was by Denmark. Uh, whereas uh, Altona was heavily influenced by Denmark. And unto, uh, until this day, they want to be separated from Hamburg again um, because they have a very different culture. Um, and this is just one example within one city, not even the biggest city. And of course, you see the same in Berlin. Duh, because the city was divided for 40 years. Um, there are huge differences between um, West and East uh, Berlin. So, um, yeah, so, such generalizations have to t be taken with a grain of salt, uh, which is what I wanted to say. So, um, if you have questions, if you have anything you want to say, do so in the comments. If you want me to look at um, other videos, just say so in the comments and tell me what videos, of course. Um, we will see us in the next video where I will look at another video that uh, talks about Germany. Like I said, this is a series like everything wrong with YouTube videos about Germany. And uh, let's see who we can find. Um, and yeah, if you had fun, if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Um, share it with your friends. Uh, uh, I will put out content. <laughs> it's It's just... If you do um, something that time-consuming, um, like YouTube videos, especially those with more editing, I've, like I've done before, and there is just basically no uh, no payoff for that, um, no real payoff. Um, nobody really watches, nobody follows. It's hard to get motivated to do more videos. But uh, as I said, I will do this series because it is um, less uh, editing. Um, for me to do and therefore less time consuming. With that, have a nice day, have a nice night. Um, until next time, I was Ossie Spawn.